Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. If you're new, I'm Kelly. This is K Bella Beauty. And I recently filmed a haul video and it was kind of like a collective haul. I picked up some stuff before my birthday, before the holiday bonus sale. Then I got some birthday gifts and I shopped both weekends in the Sephora holiday sale. And I also shopped the Ulta 20% off sale. So I will link that video up here if you have not watched that yet. But I decided since I have some new makeup products, I would do a little like get ready with me, trying out some of the products so that you can see them in action. So if you're interested in getting ready with me, let's go ahead and get started. I did already do my eyebrows, one, because I don't have any new brow products, and two, because they take me a really long time. <laughs> I have very, very sparse brows that take me forever to put on, but I don't have any other makeup on. Although I did prime my eyes with the Urban Decay Eden Eyeshadow Primer Potion and the eyeshadow palette that I got for my birthday that I will be using is the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette. And so after I primed my eyes, I did go ahead and set it with this shade right here. I think it's called Powdered Sugar. It's just like a nice base shade. And I like to set my eyeshadow primer because I feel like it just lets everything blend a little bit nicer. Now I don't really have any idea what I wanna do yet with this look so we're just gonna kind of wing it i am going to go in there's really only two crease shades and i did a test it out tuesday with this palette and i mentioned that in there but you have this shade right here which is in gingerbread latte and then you have gingerbread right here those are like your two main transition shades you can use this in the crease right here which is uh spice is nice um, so we might throw that in there at the end, but I'm going to start right here with gingerbread latte. And I did want to do my eyes first because like I said in my test it out Tuesday, I did get some fallout with this palette. So I figured if I just start with my eyes, then if I get any fallout, I can wipe it away. And I'm not someone that's really bothered by fallout. I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes that do give me some fallout. I feel like the Lorac Pro palettes, I always get fallout with those. And even the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadows, I really, really love those and they're super popular, but I definitely get kickback and I definitely get a little bit of fallout, especially with those beautiful shimmer shades. So I found the same to be true with this eyeshadow palette. But like I said, it doesn't bother me. I'll just do my eyes first and then if I need to grab a makeup wipe to clean up any fallout, I can do that and it doesn't disturb my face makeup. Then I'm going to go in and deepen up the crease a little bit with this shade right here in Gingerbread. This shade is a little bit deeper, a little bit darker, and so it'll just kind of give me some definition. I don't think I'm going to do anything too crazy with the eyes because we're just here to kind of try out some new makeup and see how everything works. Especially since I've had some of these products for a while. I have used a couple things and I mean a couple products are repurchases or things that like I've gotten samples of and tried out so I knew I wanted to get them but I've been trying to save some of these products to use with you guys for the first time just to kind of see my first impressions, catch it on camera and let you guys know what I thought about it. But if you've tried any of the products that I'm using today, I would love to know in the comments down below like what you think about them, what your first impression is, or if these are products that you're enjoying so far. I am gonna go into one of my Makeup Geek singles. This is my fall palette that I created, and I'm just gonna take this Beaches and Cream shade. This is basically basically an eyeshadow that is like the exact same skin tone as myself. It has the same tone as my skin. And so I'm just gonna kind of use this since there's not really a lighter transition shade in the Gingerbread Spice palette, which I mean, I don't mind. I have a ton of eyeshadows, but I do wanna go in with something closer to my skin tone just to blend everything out. Now one shade that I don't think that I've used, but it's definitely caught my attention, is this shade right here 
in Bake It Till You Make It. So I think we'll use this on the eyes today. And I'm gonna start without Fix Plus and just see how it looks. I typically use Fix Plus with all of my eyeshadow shades. It just makes it pop a little bit more, but we will go in without Fix Plus first and see what the pigmentation is like. And I am gonna tap it off because these shimmer shades do get some fallout, and especially if you don't use Fix Plus. The Fix Plus helps with the fallout, but I want to see what the pigmentation is like without it. And actually, I think it's really pretty. I think it looks really nice. It has a nice pop to it. Not bad. Let's go in with some Fix Plus now and see how it looks. Now that I've sprayed my brush, you can just see it makes it look a little bit more foiled and it makes it pop a little bit more. I definitely think you could get away without using it, without wetting your brush at all. And if you don't have Fix Plus, I mean, you can use any setting spray or put some water in a little spray bottle and spray it with some water. But I just like, I like that little extra pop. Now, I didn't really have any fallout until I used the Bake It Till You Make It, but uh, any, like I said, if you used Fix Plus to start off with, you probably could have helped not get so much fallout, but it doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to take a makeup wipe because I have not done anything to my face yet, and I'm just going to wipe away any fallout. It wasn't a crazy amount, but I could, I could feel a little bit falling on my skin there, so I just want to clean it up a bit and then we'll jump into the face. I'm not done with the eyes, but I do like to jump around a little bit, so I'm going to start priming my skin. This is the Marc Jacobs Invisible Undercover Perfecting Coconut Face Primer. I actually got a sample of it, so I'm not going to use this bottle yet. I want to use up this little sample that I got, this sample has lasted me a while, but this is super hydrating. It almost reminds me a little bit of the Too Faced Hangover RX, which is like one of my absolute favorite like holy grail primers. I'm Obviously it's Marc Jacobs, so it's a little bit more expensive, but I, I wanted to try something different. I love my Urban Decay, I love my uh, Too Faced Hangover RX, but, but every now and then, it's good to just switch it up a little bit, and I do have dry skin, so I definitely go for primers that are much more hydrating, and I feel like this one does a good job at prepping my skin and hydrating and making it feel nice and smooth, and when your skin is feeling hydrated and smooth and silky, it just makes your makeup go on so much better. For foundation, it's not really new. I did pick it up during, what was it, the first weekend of the holiday bonus sale. It's the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. I'm in the shade 3.0. I have gone through two bottles of this previously, and this is one of my all-time favorite foundations, but I had just been trying new foundations recently, and so I had never picked it back up, but I was like, you know what? I miss that foundation. I've mentioned it as like a holy grail product before, so I was like, just do it, Kelly. Pick up the foundation, so I did, and I'm glad that I did. I have been I have been wearing it lately, but like I said, this is not a new product to me. It's something that I just purchased, but I've already gone through two bottles, so it's like I know that I love it, so I'm glad that I got it. I know that I'll get some good use out of it. Now I do always use a beauty blender to apply my foundation and I always spritz it with some Fix Plus ahead of time. I'm running out a little bit here. But again, it's just because I have dry skin, dry skin problems. Now this foundation, the, the shade 3.0 is pretty yellow, but I have yellow undertones. I'm very warm toned. So once I blend it into the skin, I don't know if you can tell on camera, it kind of looks pretty yellow when I first put it on, but once I blend it into my skin, I feel like this is my perfect shade. Although I do know that they have like 0.5s and 
I, what is it, 0.5s are supposed to be a little bit more neutral. And then I think they even have like 0.25, which is supposed to be more cool toned. So they have a lot of shades. And I definitely recommend like going in store and having someone at Sephora help you shade match or trying a couple shades like on the back of your wrist or on your face down to your neck just to find a shade that matches you first. And then I didn't realize that some of my friends didn't know this, but if you don't know, I need my other Fix Plus, that one's basically out. If you didn't know, you can go into Sephora and ask for a sample and they will put a little sample in a container for you and you can try out a foundation before you, or anything really before you buy it. So if you are someone that likes more full coverage, I don't think this would be a foundation for you. This is definitely more of like the light to medium, which is what I go for, especially in the cooler months, like right now, fall and moving into winter. I don't need something that's super full coverage because it's gonna dry out my skin and cling to those dry patches. I go for more of a light to medium coverage, but that's exactly what this is. So if you're more of a full coverage girl and you know that right from the jump, you probably won't like this foundation. Now, right before the sale, I ran out of my Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation, which I had been repurchasing and using over and over again. So I wanted to try the Becca Aqua Luminous Perfecting Concealer because Desi Perkins talks about this a lot. And I picked up the shade Fair. And I've been using this just because I ran out of my foundation and I do like it. I do feel like it's a little bit more luminous. It doesn't dry out my skin at all, but it's not very brightening. As you can see, it definitely has more of like a yellow undertone and it doesn't really brighten things up. It just conceals. So I do also go in with my ColourPop concealer. This is not new. I've had this. This is in the shade Fair and the ColourPop concealers crease pretty bad underneath my eyes and Fair is also super light. So I don't typically like to wear them too much on their own, but I take just a little bit of the light and mix it in with that Becca Aqua Luminous to kind of brighten up the under eye. And again, I blend my concealer with my sponge, my beauty blender, I spritz it with Fix Plus, and I try not to get too close underneath my under eye because I do have fine lines. So I put the majority of the product a little bit further down and then I kind of blend upward. But I also will be going in with my eyeshadow and smoking out my lower lash line a little because that helps if you have fine lines and if you get creasing to put a little shadow under there, kind of covers everything up. I don't have a new powder to try so I just set my under eyes off camera and a little bit of my forehead. I don't set my whole face. So now we're ready to go in and do the lower lash line. So I think what I'm gonna do first is go in with this lighter brown shade in gingerbread latte and I typically like to use a pencil brush like this one the E30 by Sigma but I was in a wedding last weekend and this is really dirty I need to wash my brushes so I'm gonna go in with this fluffier one it's by Inspire the 282 eye fluff brush I used to use this all the time but then I got to a more narrow pencil. So this one's a little bit, a little bit fluffier than I'd like, but it's still gonna get the job done. And I'm just going to go right underneath my eyelid. And like I said, by putting some shadow underneath here, it kind of helps with those fine lines as well so that shadow doesn't really get in that crease. I mean, it happens to me no matter what anyway everything creases on my under eyes because I got those fine lines, but I feel like when I put a little shadow there, it just helps make everything look a little bit more youthful. I think I'm gonna take my Y21, like a flat eyeliner brush, and I don't have a shade in here that I really wanna use. I almost wish that I had something between 
reindeer paws and gingerbread. But I think reindeer paws might be a little too dark. So I think I'm gonna go in with gingerbread and just press this into the lower lash line. And then if I want a little tiny bit of reindeer paws in the outer corner, I can, but I just, I like to put some shadow right on that lower lash line, even though I smoke it out a little bit, just to kind of even everything out. You know, I want the top and bottom to be evened out. I don't want to have all of this eyeshadow on my lid and then nothing underneath. So then we're going to take a little bit of this uh, spiked eggnog here, which is just like a pretty champagne shade, and my pinky, and pop that on the inner corner. They don't have, I almost wish they had like a little bit of a lighter highlight shade. I do not like this frostbite shade right here because it's very glittery and very chunky. So I will not be using that. But if they almost had something like in that white shade that wasn't so chunky and glittery, that would have been a better inner corner, but that'll work. I am gonna hop off camera real quick. I'm gonna throw some mascara on and then we'll finish with the rest of the face. Okay, so the mascara combo that I have been using is the birthday gift that I got from Ulta. It's the Monsieur Big Mascara by Lancome. And I'm not someone who typically goes out and purchases full-size mascaras because I love drugstore mascara. But I think I would purchase this because it really gives my lashes some volume. So I usually go in with a couple coats of that. And then this is not new, but it's my Maybelline The Rocket. And I like to finish up with my Maybelline The Rocket mascara. And I feel like that kind of separates the lashes a little bit. And that's just kind of been my mascara combo lately. And I'm really loving it because I, I wasn't a huge false lash wearer before, but I noticed that when I did wear false lashes to film, I felt like it was pulling my regular eyelashes out. So I really haven't worn them in a really long time. And every now and then I'll throw a pair of false lashes on, but if you got a couple good mascaras, you're usually good to go. So let's get into the face. I did pick up a bronzer by Hourglass. It's the Ambient Lighting Bronzer. And I got the shade, what did I get? Luminous Bronze Light. Now I bought the smaller size. My friend Smags has the larger one. And I think for the price, it might be worth it. Cause I wanna say that this was like, oh, I almost dropped it. 20 something dollars and the full price is like 40. But look how tiny this is. like. This is itty, 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 bitty. Now I'm glad that I got it to try it out and bronzer lasts forever, a little bit goes a long way, but I just wanted to show you a comparison of the Hoola bronzer by Benefit and this little itty bitty hourglass one. So if you have a chance to try this before you buy it for your money, it's probably better to get the bigger one I just didn't do it that time, but I did get this during the Sephora sale, so it was 20% off anyway, and I've used this one time already, and I did really like it. I felt like it was really pretty, and I just kind of take a fluffy brush, and I put it right in the hollows of my cheeks, and I use this more as like a bronzer, and take it up onto my temples, I felt like it gives me nice color and they do have different shades so you can get a shade based on your skin tone. I think this was the shade that was recommended for fair skin, I'm pretty sure. Then I do like to go in and contour a little bit more, and this is not new, but I go in with this contour shade by Makeup Geek, and I don't know if they make these anymore, which is really upsetting if they don't. I tried to find it online because I was thinking about putting this in like a project pan and trying to pan it, so I'm like, let me look and see if Makeup Geek still has these, and I couldn't find them, and I was like, 
I cannot try and pan this if she doesn't still make these contour shades because I love the contour that it gives me. And I use a more pointed brush, the Y11 by Morphe. And I just try to keep it right in the hollows of the cheeks. Now I've been doing this new thing where I go in with my highlighter before my blush. And so I do want to try this Becca Opal because everybody talks about loving Opal. Opal was like a cult favorite. So when I saw the little macaroon trios and saw that Opal was in there, I was like, I want to try these out because I do love Becca highlighters. This is Opal right here. She has not even been swatched yet. I'm going to take my tapered highlighter F35 by Sigma. I'm just wiping it off a little bit. I'm going to pick a little bit of that up on my brush. Put it right here. Ooh, that's pretty. It's definitely very pretty. I think if you wanted to make it pop more, you could spritz it with some Fix Plus. But you definitely can see that there's highlight there. I mean, I don't think it's subtle by any means, but if you go light-handed with it, you could probably make it a little bit more subtle than I'm doing. But you could probably also make it pop a little bit more too if you spritzed it with some Fix Plus. And I will spray my face at the end, which could make it pop a little bit more too. I'm gonna put that right there, a little bit on the nose. And then we're ready for blush. For blush, another new product that I'm really excited about is by Charlotte Tilbury. And I did pick up the blush in, what is this one called? Where's the name? Let me pull it out. I don't see the name on here. I think this is the one that Nicole Guerrero talked about and it's Sex on Fire. And so this is the packaging, first of all, I love Charlotte Tilbury packaging. I'm pretty sure this is the one Nicole Guerrero talked about and it's like a neutral mauve shade and it's a little bit deeper in the middle and a little bit lighter on the outside. So I mean you could focus it on just the middle or just the outside. But I think I'm gonna do a little bit of both here. I haven't used it yet. And I also, I, I almost don't even, I almost don't even want to because it's really pretty. But I'm gonna just dab a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna dab and put it on the cheeks. I like to kind of put it right over my contour and then a little bit on the cheekbones. I feel like it's more subtle than I was expecting. I mean, I can definitely see that there's blush there and that it's like a mauve shade, but I don't know what I thought. I was expecting it to be a little bit more pigmented, but it is really pretty. Although maybe, maybe I'm just being light-handed because I didn't want to, I didn't want to ruin it. It's brand new. I'm digging into it. I definitely like the combination I have going on here, and I'm really excited about this new blush. I've been eyeing it for a while. These are pretty pricey, but since they came into Sephora, I was like, I'm picking it up during a sale, honey. Now, before I go into a lip, it's going to be tricky to pick a lip. I'm going to jump off camera. I'm going to spritz my face with some Fix Plus, do some lip swatches, and try to figure out exactly what color we're going for today. So the winner of the lip look ended up being by Dose of Colors in the shade Truffle, which I've been wanting for the longest time. And I'm so excited that Ulta and Dose of Colors have the little Let's Get Toasty quad because it has Stone, which is a fan favorite, and Truffle, which is a fan favorite. And I did line it with the Lip Cheat by Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Pillow Talk. And this right here is the finished look. And that is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for getting ready with me. I'm sure it was probably a long one. So if you stayed until the very end, let me get a little dog emoji down below. 
because I love dogs. And thank you guys for watching this video. Thanks for sticking till the end. I typically get ready and do my makeup watching other YouTube videos. So let me know if you are getting ready at the same time. And I'm going to keep trying these products. I have tons of products to try and I will probably come back to you in about a month, either in December or in the beginning of the new year and give you my final thoughts, my review, let you know what I think about each of these products. So make sure you're subscribed before you go so that you can be updated. And that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.